Welcome to another Top 5 here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I am Brandy. And I'm Alan. And today, in honor of the season, we are going to do our Top 5 Winter Movies. Not necessarily holiday films of any type, but just movies that evoke a sense of winter, or that's the first thing you think of when they come to it, or whatever a winter movie really means to you, actually. So. Yes, absolutely. Right. You want to start? Uh, sure. Um, my number five film... Uh, it's funny that you mentioned not trying to do holiday films, even though this one is kind of a holiday movie. Um, it was one of my favorite films of last year. It is Rare Exports. Mm. Finnish film. Uh, this movie is really fun. This is a fun movie. Takes the idea of Santa Claus and flips it on its head. Um, all set in this village that's just surrounded by whiteness. I mean, mm -hmm. the entire area is just completely like desolate. It's all nothing but snow everywhere. Uh, it definitely plays a part in the film. I mean, watching that movie, I can feel how cold it was. Um, it's just a really interesting, very weird kind of movie. It's a lot of fun. Um, I don't think Santa Claus is ever portrayed in the same way uh, as he is in this movie. Um, the performances by the kid in, in, uh, in the film, unfortunately I didn't write his name down, is really, really excellent, excellent um, as this character who knows what's going on, but again, the adults just don't, don't want to listen to him. Uh, it's a fun movie. Um, I suspect we may be talking about this hmm. film fairly soon. So. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Let's yet. just see that. Yeah. Um, okay, my number five also has the whole expanse of whiteness thing going on, which, I mean, you know, might end up being a little bit of a theme, but it's not really a movie you would describe as fun, and mm. that is Misery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. all about the sort of isolation and potential endlessness <laughs> of winter. Um, really one of my favorite movies, um, and just, I mean... You get the car driving through at the beginning, and you're just like, "Oh God, don't go so far into the no, yeah. the nothingness. Like you don't know what's out there." And then, of course, what's out there is a psychopath. Psycho, psycho chain lady. you to a bed. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, yeah. Um. It's like, yeah, I mean, it's like he's trapped by the elements and by being physically restrained in the Yeah, bed. it takes the whole idea of being, like, trapped by winter and just goes so over the top with it with what actually happens to the individual character, I think. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. a great, it's a great movie. Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. Um, okay, moving on to my number four film. Uh, my number four film is from 1993. Uh, not exactly a winter movie, but the elements, the cold elements in, mm -hmm. in the film really plays a part. It's directed by Frank Marshall, and it is alive. Ah, it's um, <laughs> like the ultimate elements. Exactly. Story, yeah. uh, soccer team, a bunch of them survive a plane crash. They're stranded at the high top of the mountain. Uh, just like they have to fight the cold, they have to fight freezing to death, they have to fight uh, starvation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and, I mean, it's just one of those crazy survival films. And, I mean, if those, for those of you who have seen it, you know, the the extreme measures that they go to survive in that film is... Is it going to be a spoiler I, I, if you say what they do? It's kind of like they, based on yeah, a true story. it's based on a true story. But whatever. Whatever. <laughs> I just got to say, I don't know if I would be able to do that if I was in their position. Oh, I would eat you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sweet. <laughs> That's comforting to know. Um... <laughs> If you're the first to go, then the first to go. All right. By any means necessary. Um, speaking of eating weird things when you're really hungry. No, um, my number four. <laughs> that's a terrible segue. Uh, my number four is a classic Charlie Chaplin film, and that is The Gold Rush. Ah, uh, yes. Um, I think, you know, getting away from the idea of sort of like a desolate, somber winter, this uh, you know, they're definitely out there, but, you know, it's madcap, it's the same kind of, like, action that you see in, in mm -hmm. a lot of Chaplin films, and it's, and it is a really fun movie, but it's also, like, one of the most, um, like, sad for me, because he's just, like, not treated very well throughout the course of that movie, Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, he's definitely the underdog, for sure. Yeah, even more so than some of the other ones, mm -hmm. I think, um, but it's another, awesome awesome movie um you know one that 
it's just I so many any time, so many classic moments there's that one scene that fantasy scene where he's playing with the the bread mm. rolls and then there's that i believe it's the same movie where he's in that house with the guy and the house is like yeah. tipping on the edge mm-hmm. of the cliff and everything like that it's it's such a good movie i mean chaplin he's he was a genius so yeah i mean there's not really anything we can say that hasn't been said right yeah it's great all right, moving on to my number three film. Uh, my number three f- winter movie is a documentary. It's from 2007. It is Werner Herzog's Encounters at the End of the okay, World. I still haven't seen that. Um, it's a really cool documentary. Uh, Herzog travels to Antarctica to visit the uh, scientists uh, that live and work there and pretty much explore uh, the area. Um, you would think like, wow, what's so interesting about freaking Antarctica, right? But Werner Herzog is one of those directors that can find the most interesting things in like the weirdest places. Um, just he presents an Antarctica in just such an interesting way from the, the landscapes to the life that lives underneath uh, the ice. And then even from there, he turns the camera on the people that work there. And the people that live there are just really really interesting Mm -hmm. uh i mean the movie explores like what it takes to like go to a place that no one wants to go to and a certain kind of personality yeah the quirkiness of the the people there it's a fascinating documentary um one of my favorite herzog films um so yeah good one okay my number three uh is a movie that uh, winter doesn't play such a huge part in it that you think of it right off the bat but for me it's one of the like most impressive elements of the film is the way that it tells this sort of whirlwind love story that you would associate with kind of like a summer romance and you and it tells it in winter and that is eternal sunshine and the spotless oh, mind um okay. because those scenes out on the you know you don't think of a winter beach as being particularly cinematic but those scenes out in montauk are just amazing mm-hmm. and then like the whole movie is basically like summing some their relationship is so like the the perfect moment of it is when they're out on the ice like, and he's look so at the afraid stars. that it's gonna break, yeah. and she's like, "You're crazy! Like, yeah. it's so thick right now. Yeah. Don't even worry." Like that scene of them, like, yeah, looking up or whatever. It's just show uh, me which ones you know. It's so I know it's so it's so beautiful though, <laughs> yeah. and and it and it looks at winter in a way that I think a lot of films don't at all. Like mm-hmm. as a magical time almost. To be yeah. cliche about it. I I freaking love that movie. To be honest, yeah. um, I'm really upset that I didn't think of that one. <laughs> What the heck's wrong with me? (laughs) All right. um, Moving on to my number two film. Uh, Okay. I think when you think about like snow in films, uh, my number two and number one films are pretty obvious. Uh, My number two is from 1980. It's Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Um, Okay. I mean, you have like three people in this huge house stuck because this freaking snowstorm just encompasses them. It's... It's scary uh, to, to me. I mean, just the idea that there's this killer. Um, I mean, it, it, like the thing, it's like you're trapped in this one spot mm-hmm. and there's a menace out there to get you. But in The Shining, you know who it is and you know that they're specifically out to get you. And it's just, oh, man, it's just so unnerving. Uh, Jack Nicholson's performance is, I mean, we, we've talked about it before. Yeah. And the the... The winter elements directly affect how that film ends. Um, Certainly, yes. Yeah, exactly. And I, I don't know. I, it's like we've talked about this film before. I, I don't know what else I can say about it. It's no. it's a great movie. Um, I know you may not think it is. No, but... I don't. I I never said I didn't think it was great. I just said to, I don't get the the. I don't know. I, I you know I don't go quite that far as you guys do with it. But okay. Um, anyway. Fair enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> My number two pick is also a movie we've talked about before because when we were doing our roundtable theme where we picked our uh, something from our top ten movies of all time, I picked this one, and it is Wonder Boys, mm. um, which just... <laughs> mm-hmm. um, it, it's a particular kind of winter. It's that, like, dead season when you're in school and you don't want to be there anymore, <laughs> even if you're the professor. And um, <laughs> and it and it comes out and it, like you see the snowy scenes before they have the critical party scene at the mm-hmm. beginning where everything gets kicked off but then later there's that just depressing freezing rain yeah and it's not a depressing movie at all it's kind of like madcap and and it's fun interesting movie. Yeah, yeah but um i love the way that the weather juxtaposes with the characters moods as they um 
go along, which is not necessarily like the deepest thing to ever do in a film to have mm-hmm. the weather match the mood. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's but it's quite fun, you know. I just think of that scene with Michael Douglas coming out in his ratty pink robe on the <laughs> on the porch and the f- horrible freezing rain all around, and it's just. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I love, love, love this movie. So. Yeah, Wonder Boys, I mean, I remember, you know, watching it for the first time uh, at that round table, and I mean, I really like that movie, too. And, um, I mean, we talked about it a little before with the other films, but the, the snow in there was photographed beautifully. Yeah. Um, I mean, even though, you know, it's not like a central thing, like part of the movie but it's always there it's always like flowing mm-hmm. in, in, the, in the light and everything like that it's really really great yeah um yeah so moving on to my number one movie um in in all of the, in all of the research that i did looking up these films this film always came up in every mm-hmm. list it's 1996's fargo yeah. um i i had to include it uh just again snow the winter plays a massive role in this uh, i mean they're they're characters that complain about it um characters have to bundle themselves up so much that like their entire faces are covered even while they're acting and um the interesting thing about you know the use of snow in this film is that it it, it's used to highlight the the kind of violence um that the the movie uh has um you know that famous ending scene with the wood chipper uh you know the red <laughs> and the white uh definitely contrasts and, and makes it i mean pretty shocking uh as a scene um yeah so i don't know what else to say so it's a great movie yeah great film. Uh, well, my number one as soon as we uh settled on this topic i knew that my number one would be groundhog day <laughs> um yeah. another one that's one of my favorite movies of all time and which just couldn't be more about the way that you feel in the dead of winter sometimes Mm -hmm. you know it's gonna be cold it's gonna be it's gonna last you the rest of your life it just won't end Um, it's the same thing every single day yes and uh this movie is so good like this is a everything i admire everything about it like the the performances the screenplay is impeccable Mm -hmm. i mean it is just it's very very funny but it is so smart Mm -hmm. um there's a great i don't know if you have ever read any of these little books that you can get from bfi the british film institute Mm -hmm. where they just talk about one movie and one book the one about groundhog day is great um, it's not really even the kind of movie that they usually talk about, but they, you know, even they re- realize like this is such genius. Mm-hmm. Masquerading is like a Bill Murray slapstick kind of a thing. Yeah, I mean, I love, I love how the, the elements uh, of that film prevent Bill Murray from escaping mm-hmm. <laughs> Punxsutawney. Uh, it's like he wants to get out of there. <laughs> yeah. You know, the snow will leave; it'll pass us eventually. But no, no, it doesn't. It'll, he's, he's, it's, he's gonna stay there forever. Um, uh-huh. It's a great movie. I mean, you, you said it. Uh, there's, it's like a, it's a classic film. It's wonderful. So yeah. All right. Well, that was our uh, top five winter movies. Let us know what you think we left off. I will say that uh, I thought about the thing and realized I we talked we about that a little bit too much. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. the pl- plenty of other great ones I could cheat and just do a list right now, but I won't. <laughs> Let us know what would have been on your list, and we will catch you next time. Later. <laughs>